Hey, it's Ryan J. Downey, and I was honored to have Joe Satriani as our guest at the MI Conversation Series presented by Loudwire. Here are five things we learned from the conversation. One of the world's most famous guitarists began as a drummer. I was weaning myself off of being a failed drummer. I started at nine. I took lessons from a jazz drummer, a really nice guy named Mr. Patrikas. He used to come over and give lessons in the house. Uh, Fantastic. Uh, wow, and was that lessons for all the siblings? No. Just you? Just me, yeah. <laughs> I'm not really sure where my parents met this guy. He was right out of central casting for a hip, jazzy guy from the 60s, you know. <laughs> um, cool. But he was so nice, and I was just a little, you know, a little kid that, that really wanted to make noise, and I did make a lot of noise. It wasn't necessarily good noise, and that was the problem. So as I started to notice that the noise that I made was not... Uh, as good as Mitch Mitchell, uh, you know, or John Bonham, I thought, well, maybe I ought to ease up on this thing. The Silver Surfer, Star Trek. It turns out the Satch isn't really a sci-fi guy. But of course, I got myself into this corner here because once I started to go out and tour, this is the first thing someone would ask. Thing. So, do you believe in aliens? Have you been abducted? Are you not yeah. of this earth? And I'd go. Am I going to, like, we don't have 15 minutes for me to tell this whole high school story <laughs> right. about that yeah. it's a joke, and, the, and I don't want to make the interviewer feel bad. So I just go, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. 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 <laughs> Joe was still in high school when he took on his first student. As a teacher, I was so lucky. It was a little, um, I mean, it's, it sounds funny to think that I'm just in my house doing nothing, and or I should say my parents' house, I'm just a, you know, idiot teenager, and some other little kid knocks on the door <laughs> with a pack of strings in one hand and, and a stringless guitar in the other, and he says, you know, we saw you play at the high school dance, can you teach me how to play guitar? And I'm like, oh, you little ugly little kid, get in here, you know? Sit down over there. And it just happened to be Steve I, back when he was shorter than me, you know? <laughs> Kirk Hammett had questions about laying down solos on Kill 'Em All. The key was, it wasn't my job to make the decision. I was already too old. It was in my 20s. So I was too old. You know, it was over for me. You see it when there's a 14-year-old who is inventing a new genre. Mm. You know, and and uh, so I had to just step back a little bit. And um, you you have to imagine that you know, uh, Kirk's mother's coming in dropping him off. Uh, when Larry Lalonde is taking lessons, his girlfriend and his girlfriend's mother are sitting in the other room Amazing. And, and his girlfriend's doing homework and the mother is the manager of the band Possessed, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of a family atmosphere. It's, it's not of like... Larry went on from Possessed to Primus. And yes, yeah. yeah. So, um, and then of course I told you about the, you know, the Charlie Hunter story. I mean, it's very yeah. familial. It's, it's a friendly atmosphere. Um, th there's no tuition, there are no dorms or anything like this. These people have real lives that are going on. But they just happen to be, like you said, on the cusp of this new movement. Some of Joe's best songs were years in the making. I've also had songs that have taken 15, 20 years to write because I didn't quite understand what the little riff or the chord sequence really meant to me. Um, it's not unlike life where you miss so many opportunities to understand uh, people or things that you do until you mature, and then you say, oh, that's what they were saying, or what, that's what they were doing uh, for me. Yeah. 